Okay, we're working on the uh, pan head again, a little bit deeper. So you had some problems with the rock arms, so we had to go all the way down to this point. So I'm going to go up here and show you the damage. I already honed the cylinders here, so freshen them up a little bit while we're in there. So that part got done already. I hear a Harley up front. So over here is his heads. Aren't they? Nope, that's not where they're at. What do I do with those heads? I don't know, where you go? Oh, I know where they're at. Here. They're back here. I missed that part. They're back here. They get moved around. There they are. Oh, those aren't it. Those are Evo. Oh, there they are. Pan heads. <laughs> so these are the heads off the bike. So what happened was, is, he had three studs come loose. The rocker arm lifted up and then the motor quit running on that cylinder a little bit. So, we have to go in there and fix all these stud holes up in that. Then we'll probably take the heads apart and do a little valve job while we're in here. Because the valves are sunk in there pretty deep. So we're probably going to clean these up to make them look a little better. Make it run a little bit better, a little more horsepower. And one of these nipples was loose too. Yeah, that one. That might be an intake leak. So we've got to fix that. And then we have some slightly oversized studs. They should be close to that size there. So when you stick your finger inside the hole, that's not a good sign. So those are going to have to be probably fixed too. Ready to work? Mm hmm. Okay, we're gonna put some uh, rings on there. We already filed them, or I did anyway. So who's doing the camera? Uh, watch your toes. All right, rings. Okay, you're in charge. Where's this go? On the bottom. You sure? Because in this big groove. That big one? But doesn't a, another small one have to go under it first? Nope. It is the one that's underneath. Oh, there's nothing. There's like, isn't there? I thought there was two that sandwich on. Where's your gap at? Uh, I don't know. You weren't you paying attention? No. Well, I was, but I don't remember. It was a few days ago. You just put the ring on about two seconds ago. You already forgot where the gap was? Oh, I, I thought you meant when I took it off. Yeah. Gap's right here. Too much drugs. I don't need <laughs> drugs. Here. It's right here. That was natural. <laughs> Where's the gap? Right here. Okay, put the gap right there. In the front? No. Right there. Right here. There's the shiny part you were looking at. Mm -hmm. Alright, now you go like that. Get up there, put the next gap way over here. Exactly opposite. No, it's not opposite. Nine degrees over. Three quarters opposite. No, it's right here and here. That's not three quarters. How far is that? It's like two like inches. a quarter. There you go. It's a quarter. <clears throat> I was thinking going around this way. That's a stupid way to think. Okay, so now I'm just not fitting in here. Here it goes. This is the only ring that you can wrap. Hmm. You do the bottom one first. If you don't want to scratch up your old surface, you grab a hold of your fingers and go like this. Usually put my nails under it, and you go like that. Mm -hmm. Now that is a big spring that puts tension on the oil ring. Okay. That is called a high tension oil ring. You know why it's called a high tension oil ring? Because it's got high tension. There you go. See? Brain cells are working. Okay, now this goes 180 from where the other one is. Over here. Right. So this one goes way over here. And you go down and you find a spot where it goes and you wrap it around again. I assume it's in there, but I can't see it. But it is. And you pull it down a little bit like that, drop it down. When you're all done, it should move around nice and free. See how it moves freely? Mm -hmm. That means it's not bound up. Now, those parts will not remove in relation to each other. It will spin in a piston, but wherever you put the gaps, they will stay. Mm. So if you line them up, it'll always be lined up. And that's what keeps oil from going up past there. This is oil control. And these ones are for compression. The top one's compression, the second one's oil control again. Mm. It does a dual job. Mm. Second ring is 
pretty much 99% of the time has a big dot on it. Top ring usually doesn't have shit or a dot. On cheaper rings, I just have a size here. Whatever marks you have goes up. The second okay. ring is easy to get a mark on, easy to have a chamfer on the back side of your top or bottom, depending on how it's made. So the chamfer goes down and the mark goes up? The dot goes, goes up. up. We don't care where the chamfer is. Dot okay. goes up. Any marking, up. Don't go by the chamfer, go by the mark. Because the chamfer could be here or it could be on top. Will it make a difference with the chamfer? If you flip it over and it's marked like this, it will use oil like crazy. Hmm. So if you flip it down like that, it won't use oil. Which one do you want it to be? You put the dot up. You want it to not use oil? No. Smart. Okay, now this, do not wrap these. If you wrap these, it turns into a big spring and it will not seal. Even though the instructions say to wrap it. You will have a lot of blow-by. So what you do is you put on, you spread it with your thumbs as you push down with your fingers. That might be why I had blow-by before. Probably. I, I wrapped them. So you put the ring in the groove you want to go in. In this case, you want the second groove. Mm -hmm. So you put light pressure and spread with your thumb and just wrap it around a piston like this. And you go over here, go like that. It drops right in. Make sure it's nice and free. Make sure the rings are lined up. If the rings are slightly off, you can tweak it to line them back up a little bit. But the ring should float freely in a piston. If it does not float in a piston, it will not work. This ring had no markings on it at all. It's a square cut rectangular section ring, which means it looks like that, which means if you can read that, it means it goes any way you want. So put in the groove you want. Yeah, that's in the groove I want. Mm -hmm. Hold it there and spread it. Now don't push it way over here, you'll bend the ring. So you only push right where it's hitting on a piston because that's where the load is. See how they had to glue too low? Mm -hmm. Back up. It's kind of like putting a so tire which, on. Yeah, basically. Once you get to there, you just slide with both thumbs equally. Roll them in, you're fine. And then do you have, so you don't have to move the groove. Then you make the, sure this ring moves freely again. Now it has a lot of carbon in that groove for some reason because you didn't clean it very well. But it is free. Okay, now we got a groove over here, a groove over there, and you got a groove here. This groove should be 90 degrees from that groove. And this groove should be 180 from this one. And it goes on the back side over here. You always put the grooves on your 45s, not on your 90s this way. Mm -hmm. Always go on the 45s, all your grooves. Now if you're all done, I always go like that, make sure it's all nice and free. Everything seems to be good. And that's good to go together. Okay. Do you want a cylinder? Yes, you also need a gasket. A, gasket. a rear gasket. You know, just going to rear in the front? Um, I'm guessing this one's the rear. Why? Because the shape? Unless it's supposed to go. This, this has way. the same shape as this one. Well, they're different, though. No, they're not. Same bolt pattern. Go either side, flip it over, it makes it go, works all ways. Well, maybe it's this one. Let me put it on and see. Where's the cylinder at? Over there. Camera fits on the other cylinder. So this one's for this cylinder. Why? The oil hole lines up. Okay. What about the big gap? Oh. That's weird. So maybe it's not for that cylinder. Oh, I can fix it now. That's a big fat one. I mean, they're still, they don't line up perfectly. That's a Harley. Doesn't matter. See how the gaskets match the cylinders? I had it right the first time. You had it right the first time, yes. <laughs> it just doesn't line up very well. Yeah, it's close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Alright. Now, let me see this. The reason this one's fatter is because there's oil galleries on the old motor that come along the surface right here. Mm -hmm. In most bikes it doesn't matter. But on your bike it does because you have an old bike. Yeah. <clears throat> See the oil gallery in the back there? Yep. Big one. Down through here? Yep. See on your bike you need to have it covered. That's what this area is for. Why does it have to be covered if it's the oil gallery is there? Because it'll leak right out the bike on the back. 
Oh, so you want it to go only in one spot. So do you want the oil to be on the outside of the bike or stay on the inside? Most of it on the inside. Most of it, just a little bit on the outside? I mean, I know it will leak. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's why it's like that. So, on later bikes, it's all solid back here. It really doesn't make any difference. You can run two front gaskets, you can run two rear gaskets, it doesn't matter. Hmm. On this year, this gasket is made for it. You have to have it. Now the reason they have an oil hole is here because it's an internally oiled motor, so this hole is needed. Even this, though it doesn't line up. This is the return hole, so this is needed on all of them. So that's why it's made like that. So that won't affect the oil flow and not lining up properly? It's close enough, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You don't like it being off like that? Precision made? Now, do you think the gasket is the problem or do you think the reproduction cylinder is the problem? Well, they're both reproduction items, so it's hard to so say. So you have a, a, a Taiwan, China, India cylinder, and you got an American-made gasket. Which one do you think is off? Definitely the American one. The gasket's off. <laughs> <laughs> they're off by that much, yeah. I don't know. So if you want to fix the oil leakage there, you can go in there and clean that up, or you can get the correct gasket. Or the correct cylinder. The cylinder's the problem, not the gasket. Well, my old <coughs> cylinders were pretty worn. That's why I replaced them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why these are off, because they're like that. Now, <clears throat> this has a metal piece in it, so it's hard to modify this. It's not like it's a piece of paper, you just cut it. So this one you'd have to go in there with something hard to cut it out, which means you probably do more damage than good. Mm. So we're going to leave it. Now, if you want to make it work better this way, you can cog the, the hole out here a little bit. So have a place to drain over and line up with that better. But in the real world, that's enough to drain back. It doesn't really matter. Okay, where's my oil? Over here. It's called assembly lube. You know why they call it assembly lube? Because it lubes you for assembly. Because we're going to assemble with it. Yeah. And it is lube. You were both right, half right. Two halves make a full, right? Yes. There you go. That's why there's two of you here. Now we only need a little bit of oil here, not much, because the rings are going to shove it up the whole cylinder. Now I got a relatively smooth surface here I run, because I like going fast. And you want to drive fast too and not break the motor in too much, so that means we can make it smoother. Now when you put the rings on, you have to make sure these rings line up. So how do you do this without a ring compressor? So you compress one side of the ring here, mm -hmm. like that. You compress this side as you go around, see how the ring gets smaller as you go? Yes. And eventually you get over to this side, you push it in, and the cylinder drops down. Huh. Okay. And it's going to catch on the slip right here, especially when it's got no <coughs> chamfer on it right there. See how sharp that is? Mm -hmm. It's going to make it rough. Now this is, might fall off. Usually I put this on top of the cylinder down there, but we'll see. So this is going to be a little bit harder to do because it's, it's in your bike. We have limited room. Should I move the motor? You have me move the motor, not you. I already moved it. Yeah, it's moving. Mm -hmm. so let me go in there though. Cylinder's dropping down and piston in. Yeah, hold it. <clears throat> yeah. It's ten times harder to do on the bike when the bike is like your bike. What do you mean? Everything's in the way. The piston's gonna drop real easy, so it is dropping real easy. We have a frame that's in the way, so that ain't helping. Normally I put the piston into the cylinder and then I put the whole piston on the bike as an assembly, not like this, because this is way harder this way. <clears throat> it's a good way to break a ring. You can also bend the ring and it doesn't work also. Okay, look out. I 
all the gaps on the other side now. And I get to one side to go in, which I can't even see over there. See how it just got went it. in? Yep. I squeeze the back side, which I'm doing strictly by feel because I can't tell where it is. So can you put the groove up inside the groove? Because it's not in the groove right now. I can tell it isn't. Push with your thumb, finger, whatever. Is it in the groove? Obviously it's not. Okay, well you're not helping, so you might as well just get out of the way. <clears throat> yeah, well it wasn't in the groove when I was trying to fight it, so... <clears throat> like I said, this is ten times harder doing it this way. That's why I always put the pistons on the cylinder first. Especially on new rings like these, they're really stiff. And a cylinder has very little chamfering, it's not helping. Okay, so now we got the cylinder hitting on the piston temporarily. The stud right here. And we're going to see if we can do some more damage here. Need to go in over there. It's getting pushed down. I know you got to push on your finger. Okay. Is it in? Yes. It is now. You hear that pop noise? Yeah. That was his finger in the way. It's not in the groove, is it? I can tell it ain't. Back here it is. The one that's right here. There's not in the groove. on the groove. Not gonna happen. We will break the rings before the air goes onto this motor this way. So then you get to pull the piston to do it right. Last time I did this I had the compressor tool in there. The motor was still in the bike. <coughs> What are these, spiral locks? You gonna make this hard on me? Oh yeah. Wonderful. I think it's gonna be the hard way today. More tools. Okay, I don't want to deal with stupid ass spiral locks. So I moved the rings 90 degrees so I got better access to what I need to do here. My finger. Gaps on that side. So I came around the back side. I'm going the other direction. We're up around this way. So this will be our last thing we do on this side. It's all about how you do it. And obviously, it's not working. Things in my way for doing this job easily. Something's not in. There it goes. And the O ring. 
Yeah, that's right here on the top. She's kind of wiggling around a little bit. The oil ring will kind of drop in on its own. See, there, it's in. Okay. The problem is having is the cylinder hits in the back of the frame back there. The piston's locked in, so you're trying to. It's fighting you big time because you can't jiggle it back and forth. It wants to be jammed in only in one way. Oil on the skirt. If the cylinder does not drop down easy like that, you got something wrong. So we got nothing wrong yet. Well, I don't know if I've been a ring, but other than that, we should be good. <laughs> the amount of load I was putting on is pretty heavy. And break a ring, I know that. Okay, get all this stupid ass stuff out of the way right here. So the cylinder go down. Where's your nuts at? Should be in this box. Yep, I need those. Too close, way too close. You're too close. Trying to hide on that rack? Mm, I guess. Uh. Yeah, yeah, the rack, we just have to move the bike back from here. All right, better for you. There we go. You get too close, all you see is about this much on a TV screen. You can't see the perspective of what you're working on. Okay, so that was that cylinder. He's working on the bolts back there. In the meantime, you cover that up. We do the other rings. Grab me the rings way over there. So now we do the second loop of rings. I'm going to tie it up on it. Oh, you got a runaway. Somebody moved the bike too far. I got two runaways, that was only one of them. That's the one that came over here. <clears throat> the other one's top secret. Okay. He went someplace else. So, I'm going to wrap it around there, see? Now you don't want to pull out too much on the ring, you'll bend it. So. Okay, this is the top ring, not the second. That is the second ring. Yeah. There's the ring. <coughs> Driving over it. Testing it. There's a little one here. I can't see. I know it's not in the groove. I guess I'm too deep. Yeah, see it goes way up there. Light sucks around here. Okay, here we go. Second ring over there, top ring over here. Move 90 degrees. Because the other ring's over there. Okay, we got something wrong over here. It's not free. See us not going in the piston over here? Yeah. So there's a little rust spot right there causing it, or something else? <clears throat> My guess is that little rust spot. Oh, there's carbon. So we rotate the good part of the ring over there and see if it's tight. It is not tight. 
That's probably that rust spot. Big little rust spot. So that means we're going to knock that rust spot down a little bit. So use my honing stone for that. Where'd that run off to? Right. Oh, let's do it. Is that a new honing stone? My new honing stone? <laughs> See how tight it is there? That was good for about 50%, but that's all you're going to get from rubbing on it. Now I should get a real honing stone.